I started introducing legislation. My sister-in-law had died a few years earlier of cancer and she found medical marijuana to help her with uh, the horrible pain and suffering and nausea that she had from chemotherapy and radiation. And then in 1998, my best friend died while we were deliberating legislation I'd introduced on medical marijuana, which we did not get through, so I gladly joined with the forces to work on getting Initiative 692 approved by the voters in 1998, led by uh, Dr. Rob Killian and many organizations, which did get accomplished. Uh, since then, I've worked to try to make sure that it works effectively, that the law works. And that's when we get into a nexus between legislation that goes through the legislative process, citizen activism, which is essential, and thirdly, raising the visibility and understanding of the public and the mainstream public who don't really know. The ACLU had conducted polls that showed that there was widespread support of that, and eventually we were able to enact some changes to make things more readily available for qualified patients to help out providers and physicians. This last session, we enacted legislation I introduced to allow for all licensed medical providers to provide the authorization for qualified uh, patients to be able to utilize um, cannabis or medical marijuana. But we still have a lot left to do there. And with regard to the medical use of marijuana, I've been working with organizations, individuals, uh, state officials to refine legislation that I'll be introducing next year in 2012 when the legislature convenes in January. It will be an omnibus medical marijuana cannabis act because we know that there's a lot left to do. Uh, we need to provide for a safe, well-regulated, secure, and consistent source of marijuana and something that patients and providers can access without threat of arrest and prosecution. Our current statute only allows for an affirmative defense, which is really not much at all. And as Dominic Holden brought out in The Stranger last week, I think it was, that the arrests have gone up dramatically, even in the city of Seattle, which has an ordinance that marijuana will have the least priority for arrest in the city of Seattle. So that's pretty shocking. The bill that I will be introducing will also, besides providing for protection against arrest and prosecution, will change the limitations as well that designated providers may only serve one patient at any one point in time. Uh, secondly, it will allow for recipro reciprocity for authorized patients visiting from any state that has legal use of medical marijuana. Uh, thirdly, it will provide from restrictions of, or protections from restrictions of parental rights without any proof of um, excuse me, without any proof of uh, parents not being able to provide the, their performance of parental functions adequately. It will also provide protections from negative consequences of, for work-related uh, situations off-site as long as the use of medical marijuana is authorized and does not have any effect on the pay, on the individual's performance of work responsibilities. Uh, and also, and this is another very important part of the legislation that we're working on, that we will create a system for licensing and regulation of production and dispensing of medical marijuana for qualified patients through the Department of Agriculture and the Department of Health. So really, it's a big step forward if we can get through the provisions.
but as a legislator, I know that what has to happen is we have to convince a majority of legislators to, to get that accomplished, which is where many of you come in to help persuade legislators that this is really, really important to do. With regard to the discussion of legalization, I had been convinced two years ago that the best way to go about getting to that stage was to have deregulation come about first. As I mentioned earlier, we're not one of the 14 states that allow for deregulation dating back to the 1970s. And it seemed like too much of a leap for the public to accept and for legislators too uh, that we go the full legalization route. But I have since been convinced through the incredible work of Sensible Washington, which has raised the visibility in the public dramatically, and as well as other groups working on this issue, that we should tackle legalization. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in California in November with their initiative. And Douglas Hyatt, who will be speaking, and I've had many conversations about this. This is a good example of supporting the common goals, but maybe having a different approach. I think it's very important to work on this legislatively first uh, so that we can raise the profile in the public for the more mainstream public who may not get it otherwise. But secondly, I wish that the initiative that apparently is being um, offered in 2011 would do two things. One, provide regulation because although Douglas will say that the legislature can provide regulation, it takes two-thirds vote of the legislature to amend an initiative after it's approved by the voters. After two years, it's a simple majority, but the legislature really, very, very rarely amends an initiative. They don't like to do that. Uh, so I'd rather have regulations within the initiative lang language or directions to the appropriate agencies or the local government, such as in the case with the California initiative. And secondly, I think 2012 would be a better year with more likelihood of getting the measure approved by the voters because it'll be a huge voter turnout year with the presidential election, a gubernatorial election. 2011 elections are city and county ones. They're just not going to have the pull uh, to get as many voters out. But again, I support the goals. We need to move forward. And if the citizen initiative is the way to do it, that's fine with me and I will work on it. But I want to make sure that we're approaching it in the most effective way. Thank you.